Welcome back, brother, to another episode of Wrestling with Exotics. It's your boy, the Franchise Kid, Franchise Jerry, and I got my dog with me. Think I need a Fiji water, baby. And it's a new world order, motherfucker. We out here. Let's talk about Friday Night Smackdown, my dog. All right. The first match, we got Braun Strowman versus Gunther for the IC title. What'd you think about this one, brother? It was a great match. I thought it was a good match. I think Braun and uh, Gunther showed why they are two top talents in WWE, especially being at the size that they are. They put on one of the harder hitting matches that we rarely get to see on SmackDown because I feel like it, that wrestling style that both of them have is they they contrast, but at the same time it's like one and the same. I feel like Braun's an American version of Gunther. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that, brother. <laughs> He's a real American. But uh, I just think that this couldn't have gone any better. Like, Gunther should have won, and he did. He brought back a prestige to the Intercontinental title. I look forward to seeing who's going to challenge him next for the title. What about you? Uh, let me just bring it back down to normal real quick and say, Walter really did regain my respect in this match. He pulled up by himself, no Imperium, no running, no distractions, and... It was just a great physical matchup between the greats. And I also like how he showed off his technical side. And he used his technical side to weaken Braun Strowman's arm. And that's how he overall ended up winning this match. Um, So, yeah, my hat off to him. And I also like seeing that Braun Strowman transitioned away from those red pants. Because those red pants was just too fucking much. (laughs) One boo-boo away. (laughs) <laughs> swear yeah next up we had Sami Zayn and the wise man segment which I thought was very telling of what's to come of Sami Zayn's future I think this whole segment is just and this whole bloodline stuff with Sami is very confusing for himself because he originally joined the bloodline to gain friendship and protection to gain back the intercontinental championship and for any problem he had to deal with in the locker room even though he's is the locker room leader, which is self-proclaimed, by the way. I just feel that the wise man saying no backup for you tonight is kind of like, I don't know. Because Roman, why didn't he tell Sammy? Sammy has no problem acknowledging him. No problem going exactly what he says is the plan. But why is he not informing the plan? He just tell, Basically, that shows me, Sammy, just do your part in my plan. So what do you think about it? The whole thing is confusing me, brother. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, I'm fucking sick of it, man. And it's not that sweet. I honestly wish that Sammy would leave these motherfuckers and just be on his own shit at this point. Because I feel like they're just going to eventually do him bad. All of this just to do Sammy bad is crazy. But the next segment we got for you guys... We got Ray El Cucaracha Mysterio. <laughs> and this is the first time we hear him speak, brother, since the last time he was on Raw, brother. And he comes out and basically talking about how Dominic ruined Christmas and how he's a fake thug and all this shit. And then Karrion Cross's musty ass going to come out <laughs> and start flaming him about how it's pretty much Ray Mysterio, El Cucaracha's fault that... Dom has this poor build that Dom is just shaped like an out of shape refrigerator. And it's just, it's, I, I don't know, brother. I just didn't understand it. It's and too then, much, brother. To- <laughs> 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 but that pretty much led Ray to getting choked out. So I don't know, bro. What do you think about this feud? I'll tell you this. If Karrion Cross loses this feud with Rey Mysterio, consider him. Shovel brother. <laughs> go ahead and bury him, brother. Because he's out of here. He's done. He's over it, brother. Because what the fuck else are you going to do? You can, like, what are you going to do? And, okay, if if Karrion Cross does end up winning this, I need this to be Rey's last sacrificial. I'm putting over young talent. That is just. I have no type of real relation to of not even actually I'm not even talking about relation as in genetic. I'm talking about like it just doesn't correspond. 
Right. Why the fuck am I putting over Karrion Cross? It's not like we're both coming up. A lot of those people Ray put over in his younger days, they were coming up at the same time, so it just made sense. He yeah. had to lose to them. And they were Hispanic, brother. Yeah, so I'm like, he's helping. You came across, you don't, you something missing from you, and you're doing too much, and you, and you think you're doing enough, and it's not enough, and he needs to, to get the fuck on. Yeah, for real. It it doesn't have to be at the expense of Rey Mysterio. I did it at any, I'd rather him keep bullying Mad Cat Moss. Yeah, that's more funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's funny, brother. <laughs> keep it up. Uh, do you see Rey Mysterio winning Hell a man. WWE championship before the end of his career? I, bro, honestly, at least one more time. He raised in my top five because he's one of my favorite wrestlers I ever watched growing up. Like one of the first I seen him, that I was like, "Ooh, that he's just cool." His graphic, I was like, "He's dope as fuck." I don't know who he is. Yeah, cool. I wish he still did the toaster. Yeah, like, bro, I'm trying to see, like, so. I just don't feel like WWE works him into his into their plans, like like how they like how they like try to push Roman and how they try to push Theory these random people that those are the people yeah. that WWE extensively went out there wearing like no you're gonna you're gonna do this gonna I do hope this. like when they split the belts up because there's hella rumors going around that they're gonna split the belts mm-hmm. up uh, that they will make some type of opportunity for him to at least hold it for like three months like bro, least, i wish like, he would i wish they would that's what that's another thing too bro i don't i feel like if they give it to him they're gonna give it on some petty shit and make him only have it for a month or like do something like awkward like that it's like, better than not having it at all I at feel least like he gets to finish his career saying that he yeah but i just time. that'd be cool but i don't even think they'll do that they're like why right you give you he give you the cover he give you all this other shit like why do you want that <laughs> Like that's like, that's foul. Yeah, like that's, that's foul. what I feel like they'll do. That's foul, do. brother. Like, that's foul, but it's like I feel like that's what they're on. Ray's one of the most talented in ring competitors we've ever seen, and he doesn't even have a problem cutting a promo or making you feel or have, you know, make you feel for him as a as an in ring performer too, uh, away from just performing in the ring. So it's kind of it's kind of odd that they haven't put the title on him at least five times. So that's how I know I don't feel like they'll give it to him again because I feel like his this. The last three years, he had his career resurgence, and they haven't given it to him yet. But they keep teasing like he's in that main event scene, giving him the respect like it in a sense, but never getting him the title. And I would love that, bro. That would make me feel like so accomplished for like just I feel like I'm doing like I'm Ray's son actually. Now yeah. make, and I would make I feel like they'd be perfect time to do it if it was it would be right now because yeah it would be showing Dominic like yeah you're oh look you want to go against the grain huh you think you're on some shit. Your dad's winning championships by himself, and you're over here riding coattails of three people trying to figure out themselves. You're right. And Which is insane. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy when you really think about it, because the Judgment Day is nowhere near. The, all of them together don't have Ray's accomplishments by himself. Next up, brother, we got Bray Wyatt, and he comes out, says a bunch of hoobla. <laughs> But I will tell you this, brother. He does have one of the best intros in wrestling today. But he'll be in a pitch black match with LA Knight at Royal Rumble. Bray Wyatt reminds everyone who he is and LAK better run, brother. Because he's going to end up having to put the paws on him in the dark. (laughs) (laughs) What do you think about this? Because after that promo... I'm kind of leaning towards Bray Wyatt, brother. Yeah, Bray's looking like he means business, but honestly, I still don't want to count out LA Knight. Just off the fact that LA Knight's consistent with himself, and this Bray Wyatt right here that we saw was the eater of worlds of Bray Wyatt. If you guys are not familiar with that, that is Bray Wyatt's persona from 2013 to, I want to say, 2019. And I really feel like that's what I've seen in there. And he was saying he's all these things. So that's what the eating world would say. I can fucking conquer anything. Mm-hmm. You can't stop me. I'm that's what me. it is. It, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I don't know, man. I like, I don't know which Bray Wyatt I'm getting. Because this was a different one from the one we saw these past couple of weeks. And I, I want to go with the consistency I see in LA night. Like something's gonna, something's gonna happen where he's not. He's to prove himself. And I want to see the match. I don't even know how we're going to see a fish black match, but I'm so interested, you know? Yo, yeah. This match is going to be cracking, brother. Our next hilarious segment to talk about on SmackDown. 
Because Liv Morgan smacking the shit out of Raquel Rodriguez, brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> put the fear of God in her. <laughs> uh, I just want to quickly say this was hilarious. I laughed out loud because I just like, Raquel, you got slapped and all you did was ask I love it. That. Hold up. Check this out. The way she did it was hilarious. She said, look, I just got my palm red. <laughs> Smack that bitch <laughs> on the floor. I was like, wow, that was tough. Yeah, that was tough. tough. <laughs> that should have me rolling, bro. But uh, so I just think, Raquel, how are you this uh, big imposing figure? You're getting slapped like this, and all you do is challenge her to a fucking match. You, know, <laughs> you didn't want to slap her back. You let her walk away from you, and you just stare off angrily in the distance. You're Liv's supposed to be in your position, but you know. It's each his own, uh, but this led to a match. Now, what do you think about their match, bro? They honestly had a great match, and I didn't expect Liv Morgan to lose, but hey, it's what had to happen. Raquel honestly needed this win more than Liv Morgan did because she needed to remind everybody that she's not for games, brother. All right, and uh, I will say about Liv, though, She's also earning my respect more and more every week, you know, in the ring, because I can see her really making the effort to evolve. And I love seeing that, you know what I'm saying? And I love her confidence in the ring, too. Like, I can definitely see her being a multi-champion. Yeah, I think, uh, going just to go back on this real quick, what you said about Raquel needing it more than Liv, I feel as though Raquel definitely needed it because Liv's already a former women's champion. And that makes you can say that. So definitely, Raquel, you're trying to still fill those shoes. Right. And it might be like a whole That's whole why she half. slapped you. <laughs> That's why she slapped her like that. Like, you bitch, I'm, I'm that already. <laughs> All of what you thought you was, I'm that and more. That's why you got slapped. All right, brother. Now we're going to talk about the main event. The part we've all been waiting for. We got Sami Zayn. And we got... The chubby Kevin Owens <laughs> piece of trash. <laughs> Man, they put on a motherfucking classic, I tell you. Goddamn, until the bloodline fucking came out of nowhere and destroyed the whole fucking match, man. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, brother, but I didn't lie. I was hoping 71, brother. I just was couldn't hang it. I was sick. You know what I'm saying? It got ready to hook up, brother. I'm just like, what the fuck? Nah, but for real though, it was it was a good match until they came in and fucked it up. Like Sammy was dominating this match. He looked like he was he had this in the bag. So I don't know if Roman is doing this as a mind fuck or what. Like he believes in Sammy, so he just sent the bloodline out there to whoop K- Kale's ass anyway, just to get an advantage. Or I don't know what. What the hell is going on? Like I said, brother, this shit is confusing from the jump. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like they're just making it too extra at this point. And if all of this is just going to lead to a Sami Zayn beatdown, at the end of the day, I don't want to see it. What do you think about this shit, brother? And what's next for the bloodline? Yeah, let me tell you something, brother. I don't know what's next for the bloodline. I think it's going to be very weird for Sami, brother. He's going to feel a way about this. If you look at the end of this match, he was looking around. He had to join in late because he had to catch himself like, I'm telling to myself, brother, I don't <laughs> want to get X'd out. I don't want to get voted off the island. Roman's coming back next week. Yeah. I, I, like, so every time I see Sammy now and when, like, the small tidbits of when shit is not exactly how he thought it was going to go, I see him question, like, am I really a part of the bloodline or are they playing me? And, like, the more he plays in denial, it's kind of bad because I see them just going to full out turn on him. And it's like it could be it could go either of the two ways. Him fucking up one small thing and him thinking if he just apologized right there and shit is cool and they just snap. Or or him doing exactly how shit's supposed to go and them snapping anyway and this nigga and just having him just strung out. By him. But he's like, but I acknowledge you. And then he just Roman just kicking him, choked him out and shit. Mm-hmm. And you just see the Uso standing over, and Jay, Jimmy's over there just like trying, trying to look because he's like, he fucks with Sammy. Yeah. And Jay's just like, see, I told you. I told you. How, it just had to be done. Well, in that case, Sammy, 
Welcome to the Oso Penitentiary, brother. <laughs> but yeah, bro, I enjoyed SmackDown, bro. It was a good show this week. I hate the way it ended, but overall, I enjoyed the entire show, bro. How did you think SmackDown did this week? Mm, honestly, bro, it was like a 7.5. I want to give it an 8 if I'm being generous because, like, everything that we already spoke on is just like it was a steady flow of things. It's like had some good moments to start off. Great. Fucking, I love when SmackDown starts off with a championship match and it didn't end in no ho shit. I feel like that's very important with wrestling, now, especially because. The surprise roll up is getting played out, so I would I don't want to see that either when it's a clean victory. This was a decisive winner in this match. So, you know, when you have a decisive winner, it doesn't make the loser look bad because that just shows the skill how skilled the person was that beat them. When someone is cheated, it just leaves a lot of room for saying, How do you even let someone cheat you like that? or how do you even let someone have a, a surprise roll up because it's professional? It just looks crazy. It is only good sometimes for uh, like a comic relief and make me be like, haha, that person should lose because I don't like them. Not versus they actually lost because they were suck, you know? Right. And that's been another message from the New World Order, brother. And that's NWO. Franchise motherfucking Jerry. And I got my dog. Big Uddy, the Fiji Water. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, brother. Share yeah, that shit with the world. And turn on your post notifications so you know every time we drop a track, brother. Peace. Peace.